What's going on, everybody? Jeff Rieger, another episode of The Daily Ticket. This one for a Thursday. It's the 29th of February. One extra day for the month. This month has been so good weather-wise. I've golfed five times this month that they figured, why not give us another day of February? Best February ever, wasn't it? Oh my goodness, I love waking up on a random weekday and it's 65 outside and you can go for a run, you can drive around with your windows down, you can take the kids to the park, you can go golfing. Best February ever. This is like a free day. I don't think anybody should have to work today. I think we should just all enjoy being alive. The 29th of February. Doesn't happen all that often, people. So enjoy it. I'm not going to take up too much of your time. I do have good news for you, though, I feel. Fake good news and then real good news and then real, real good news. Let's start with the fake good news. So I admit I'm a dumbass and I enjoy looking at spring training stats. It's stupid. I know. But Riley Green is hitting 500 for the spring. Spencer Torkelson is hitting 667 for the spring. Colt Keith is hitting 375 for the spring. And then there's Javier Baez, (laughs) who's hitting zero. Javier Baez has yet to get a hit. Now, of course, the sample size is very small. I admit that. I also did a podcast about Baez. I really kind of thought, like, this would be a breakout year for Javi. I thought he was embarrassed over the last couple years. Early indications... I was wrong, like I usually am. Javi Baez hitting zero for the spring. But the good news is the rest of the team apparently mashing. Tomorrow on the podcast, again, unless something crazy happens, I have a take about baseball and the Tigers. And I want to know why so many people are giving Scott Harris a free pass. I'll explain. We'll do that tomorrow. The real good news. How about the Red Wings? They won six in a row. They play the Islanders tonight. They're damn near 10 points up the playoff cut line. They're making the playoffs. And furthermore, this is a team that could not just win a series. They can make a deep run. Alex Lyon has been Alex Lyon has been a revelation in net. 31-year-old dude from Yale never really got a shot. He did get the Panthers into the playoffs last year. And, of course, the Panthers went all the way to the Cup Finals. This year, Alex Lyon has been amazing. Where would the Wings be without Alex Lyon? But it's not just him. Like Patrick Kane, 30 points in 29 games. Dylan Larkin's got 26 goals. Alex DeBrinkett has been as advertised. Lucas Raymond is playing red hot right now. The Wings are just really executing at a ridiculous clip. They go for seven in a row tonight. It's no longer a conversation of if they'll make the playoffs. It's how far are they going to go? And it's the playoffs. Anything can happen. Eight seeds go to the cup finals all the time. Happen as recent as last season. Look at the Kraken last year. Very similar team to the Wings. They upset the Avalanche in the first round. Anything can happen. I was walking at the LCA on Tuesday night. And they have that Chevrolet Plaza outside of the arena. And as I was walking to my car, because I had to go back to the studio to do the Red Wings, I looked over, and there wasn't a whole lot of people there, but the TV was showing the Wings game. And it was really nice outside. And I had this, like, epiphany of what it's going to be like when the Wings are in the postseason in downtown Detroit. I had the good fortune of going to two Pistons-Bucks games. Playoff games at Little Caesars Arena. The only two playoff games the LCA has ever seen. The environment was amazing despite the fact that we knew the Pistons would get the shit kicked out of them by the Bucks, And they did. Remember, Blake Griffin was amazing in those two games. However, this is going to be better. Because the Wings got a legitimate chance to not just win one series, but to make a very deep run. And the trade deadline is next week, and it's going to be interesting to see what Steve Eisman does to add to this team. Because for the first time in his regime, he's experienced a six-game winning streak, and he's not going to have to sell off a bunch of players for first-round picks. 
The Red Wings are tremendous. They take on the Islanders tonight. Awesome. All right. And now for even more good news. I'll put this up here. And I like when this happens, by the way. The NFLPA survey always happens right around the combine. Players are asked to give their opinion, grade the work environments for their teams and apparently other teams. And I know what you're wondering, how did the Detroit Lions do? And I can tell you the answer is not bad. As an organization, the Detroit Lions came in 13th. Dolphins are one, Vikings are two, Packers, Eagles, Jags, 49ers, Texans, and the Giants, the Raiders, and the Bears round out the top 10. Bills, Cowboys are 11 and 12, and then Seahawks, Ravens, Broncos, Panthers, Titans, Saints, Rams, Jets, Colts, Browns, Bucks, Falcons, Bengals, <gasps> Cardinals, Steelers, Patriots, Chargers, Chiefs, and Commanders. Before we get more into the Lions, I must tell you, like, it's funny reading team grades. Like, for instance, the Steelers ranked 28th. Not very good. Treatment of families. They received an F minus. I don't even know how that's possible, but apparently they don't treat players' families very good. The food in the cafeteria gets a B minus. Their nutritionist or dietitian gets a D. The locker room, an F. Training room, D plus. Training staff, a C. The weight room, a C. Strength coaches, B+. Plus. Travel, D. Head coach Mike Tomlin got an A, though. And ownership got an F. 31st in the league. And the Steelers stink. So maybe there's some correlation to these surveys and how teams do on the field. Or maybe not. Because the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. And they rank dead last in these surveys. They got a D plus in treatment of families. They got a C minus in food. They got an F in nutritionist, an F in the locker room, a D in the training room, an F in the training staff, weight room a C plus, strength coaches a C plus, team travel a D, ownership an F minus. But the head coach, Andy Reid, got an A plus. They were the worst team in all the NFL when it comes to these NFL PA surveys. And they won the fucking Super Bowl. So apparently these things don't mean all that much unless you want them to mean that much. Because the Lions did a nice job, 13th overall. Let me give you their grades, all right? NFL PA working condition report card. Family treatment, Lions got a B, not bad. The food, average at best, they got a C. Nutritionist, the dietitian, C plus. Their locker room, however, got a B minus. Their training room got a B. Their training staff got a B. Their weight room got a B plus. Then it gets good. Strength coaches, an A minus. Team travel got a B. The owner. Sheila Ford, a ham, a B minus. That's pretty good, considering what we're used to seeing from Lions ownership over the years, right? And then there's their head coach. Dan Campbell got an A plus. You knew guys love playing for this guy. But an A plus. Dan Campbell, one of the best coaches in the entire game, according to players. And I'm looking at the entire coaching rankings. Only three coaches got an A+. Andy Reid, Dan Campbell, Kevin O'Connell from the Vikings. Sean McDermott, Zach Taylor, Mike McCarthy, Sean McVay, Mike McDonald, Nick Sirianni, Mike Tomlin, Kyle Shanahan, and Pete Carroll. They all got an A. So Campbell better than them. Jonathan Gannon, Sean Payton, Brian Dable, Doug Peterson, Sean Steichen, Frank Reich, D'Amico Ryans got an A-. minus. John Harbaugh, Matt LaFleur, Mike Vrabel, a B+. Vrabel, of course, not employed anywhere. Matt Eberflus, Brandon Staley, and Robert Sala got a B. Like, Brandon Staley is an awful football coach who got fired and Jim Harbaugh took his job. But apparently the players didn't hate playing for him because he got a B. 
Kevin Stefanski, Bill Belichick, Dennis Allen, and Todd Bowles got a B minus. Arthur Smith, he gone a C plus. Ron Rivera, a C. And who is the worst coach in the entire NFL that's no longer employed? Josh McDaniels, former Raiders coach. He got a D. So those are your rankings. Dan Campbell's a hell of a coach. And I know we worry about Dan Gamble. And I know we'll never let the NFC Championship game decisions go by the wayside. I know people are still agitated that he decided not to kick on a couple of fourth down conversions. I get it. But I do think every now and then we forget how good the guy is. Do you know for the longest time, of course you do. Why am I even asking? But for the longest time, the Lions could not get a head coach that got another job being a head coach. It was always the exact same thing. You get fired, you never get another head coaching gig in the NFL. It was ridiculous. It was uncanny, but it was true. And the Lions have never had a good coach. They've never had a good coach. That's been one of the things that's always been missing. Go down the list. It's embarrassing. Whether you're talking about Monty Clark or Daryl Rogers, even Wayne Fonts had a great team, not a great coach. I got to believe if they did this NFLPA survey back then, Wayne would have got a D. Marty Morningwig was a freaking joke. Jim Caldwell, good coach, but just couldn't get over the top. Matt Patricia, an absolute embarrassment. Like, hey, we just lost to the Jets. Let's go ahead and bury our pants and our jerseys, and we hope that the team comes up so we can burn them before we bury them. True story. Patricia was awful. The Lions have never had a good coach. Steve Mariucci, remember that press conference for that guy? Ford Field, Steve's wearing the beautiful suit. What an absolute train wreck. Tom Izzo's best buddy. The Lions, for as long as I lived and as you lived, have never had a good coach. And then this guy comes in, you know, the story with the kneecaps and the press conference. Dan Campbell starting, what, 0-8. Dan Campbell starting 3-13-1. Dan Campbell being 1-6 in, in year two. And now not only does he get the Lions to the NFC title game, but he gets an A-plus in the NFLPA survey. An A-plus. I do think there's something to be said for the players on your team enjoying playing for you. Dan Campbell in 29 games has yet to suffer a losing skid. Dan Campbell took you to heights you've never thought were possible. In three years, the guy just continues to grow. He was never even a coordinator, just an interim head coach for the Dolphins. And Dan Campbell gets an A-plus and is one of the best coaches in the entire NFL. Isn't it amazing? We're going into an offseason. Talking about go get a big free agent, put us over the top, get us to the Super Bowl. We never talked like that before. Brad Holmes, great GM, Dan Campbell, awesome coach, has changed this all around. And next year, I don't know how good they're going to be. The divisions is going to be tougher. Their schedule's tougher. A lot more good teams, I feel, in the NFC. But as long as you got that guy wearing the headsets, I kind of feel that you got a really good chance. Ben Johnson has been offered job after job after job. And maybe he doesn't want a head coaching job. Or maybe he just really likes working for Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell has made decisions to fire guys. They've worked out. Anthony Lynn did not work out, so he turned into Ben Johnson. Aubrey Pleasance did not work out. And after he was fired... The defense kind of took off. Every move he makes, for the most part, seems to be right. So I'm not surprised at all by the fact he got an A-plus in this NFL PA survey. Not at all, because he's a fantastic coach. He's an unreal coach. And I think the Lions and Lions fans are lucky to have him. I think it's that simple. So every now and then, maybe you forget about the Dan Gamble. Maybe you forget about the fourth down plays. Maybe you forget about some decisions that don't work out, like the two-point conversion three different times in Dallas. Maybe you forget about those decisions, and you say to yourself, holy cow, Lions got themselves, for the first time ever, a truly legitimate stud of a coach. 
And the NFL PA survey indicates that as well. I wanted to bring that to you. We're lucky to have this dude. It's been an embarrassment, head coaching wise, our entire life. And now you got a guy that everybody respects, and all he does is win football games. So let me know, comment section. You proud of your head coach? Maybe you don't think the survey means anything. I thought it was interesting. Good for Dan. So congratulations, Dan Campbell. You get yourself an A-plus and you deserve it. Lions 13th in these surveys. Again, maybe that don't mean anything because the Chiefs were dead last and they ended up winning the Super Bowl. So at the end of the day, who cares? However, the Browns apparently have a really bad weight room. And Kevin Stefanski at the Combine was saying, oh, yeah, we're upgrading it. We want to make it better for our players. So these teams do care what the players say. Because obviously, happy players, and you got yourself a better chance to have, I would think. So, do you put any stock into the NFLPA surveys? Do you throw a little party, the fact that the Lions finally have a legitimate head coach? Or maybe you're still upset about what happened a month ago, and Dan Campbell deciding to go for it a couple different times, instead of using Michael Badgley to kick a field goal. Let me know in the comments section. Speaking of the comments, we go from Dan Campbell to, oh yeah, Dan Campbell. Yesterday's podcast was about the Packers GM taking a shot at the Lions, saying where he's from, they don't hang divisional banners. And it was about Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell talked about a plethora of issues. Jameson Williams, Hendon Hooker, Jared Goff, his one regret from the NFC title game. I thought Dan Campbell was really good at the combine. Let's see what people are saying. Corby Q says, I hope they extend golf honestly. Sports Track, the website, they put out a little article about they believe Jared's going to make $180 million over four years. So that's $20 million cheaper than the two hundred dollars that Boomer Esiason said. We're talking $86 to $90 million guaranteed. What else we got here? Mike Sturs, 3532, says, that hair, though, yes, listen, my podcast right there, that was yesterday's podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, I'm showing it to you. My hair is an abomination. My hair is like the NFLPA survey for the Chiefs. Just a disaster. I got to shave it. I'm going to shave it. I'm going to do it. I keep putting it off. Like, I think today it looks pretty good, but I, I, I got to get rid of it. I got to be done with it. It's over. Trent Phillips, 84-84. Stop being stupid. The hook was injured. How are they going to know anything about him? He's talking about Hendon Hooker. Dan Campbell says doesn't really know much about his backup quarterback considering he has been injured, even though a lot of people are calling for him to be the quarterback. And then one more for you. Trent Phillips, 84-84 as well, says what's wrong with giving money to kids in the hood? It would have been better in Birmingham, though, question mark. Yeah. I was just making the point. Jamison Williams and Dan Campbell talked about this, his transition, how good he's become. And next year, when he continues to work hard, he could be a starter on this offense. But I was pointing out that people were unfair with Jamo. They ripped him for everything before the season. He got suspended. They ripped him. He was at a Coney at 3 in the morning. People ripped him. He gave kids to money in a neighborhood. People ripped them. He lit off fireworks on the 4th of July. People ripped them. Guys at my own station ripped them. Dan Campbell did not seem happy with number nine. And then all of a sudden, j put his head down. He got to work, and he's been awesome. And now, considering how consistent he is, you saw Ben Johnson using him in different ways. Like, I think Jamison Williams is going to make a major impact next season. But yes, I was pointing out that people, I thought, were being unfair towards Jamo Last season, before the season. Remember the preseason game? He dropped the pass and everybody went crazy about it? Come on. Uh, how about one more for you? Oh, Steven Digert, 7,600. People should be careful about ranking love. 
This guy had some great games. On the other hand, he had some really erratic games. He still stares down receivers and throws off his back foot. Of course, that is talking about the Packers GM that ripped on the Lions for hanging the divisional championship banner, saying Jordan Love ain't going to be that good. I can't wait for next football season. I mean, if it were to come right now, I'd be pretty damn happy. I can't wait to see how this division plays out. Anyway, that's going to do it for the Daily Ticket tomorrow. What the hell is with all the Scott bots? I'll tell you exactly what they are and why people are treating Scott Harris like a baseball god and treating other people that are questioning the offseason like morons. We'll get to it tomorrow on the Daily Ticket, unless something crazy happens in the meantime. All right, enjoy your Thursday. Enjoy the 29th of February, everybody. And we'll catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.